Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Last week, municipal leaders from across Canada gathered in Calgary for their annual FCM convention. And we have a compelling story today about a significant investment in municipalities' collective fight against climate change. Intact Financial Cooperation announced on the last day of the convention the launch of its enhanced 2024 Municipal Climate Resilient Grant Program. Now, in a bold move to support climate adaptation efforts, Intact is doubling its investment, committing $2 million over the next two years. This increased funding aims to bolster practical solutions for municipalities, registered charities, and Indigenous communities facing the growing threat of extreme weather events such as flooding and wildfires. Carla Smith, Executive Vice President and Chief Strategy Climate and People Officer at Intact Financial Cooperation, stated, quote, As the frequency and severity of extreme weather continues to increase, we are doubling down on helping people and communities adapt to the changing climate, end quote. Intact Municipal Climate Resilient Grants prioritize initiatives that target the most vulnerable communities – implementing adaptation strategies identified by the Intact Center of Climate Adaptation at the University of Waterloo. These projects must demonstrate concrete success indicators and have the potential for community-wide scalability. Now, we caught up with Smith regarding the announcement and what it means for municipalities. Here is that interview. Okay. So you were at FCM, there's a big announcement coming up, I'm assuming, and I'm going to sort of spoil the bags here, but this is not coming out until after the right, announcement has right, made. Yes. What announcement are you planning to make here at FCM yeah. on Sunday? So back in 2022, another pilot that we did was something that we call um, Municipal Resiliency Grants. Uh, and we did this through uh, one of the businesses that we have, Intact Public Entities, who specializes in providing insurance to uh, municipalities. And um, so we put a million dollars aside and we uh, invited municipalities to apply, making a business case for projects that they thought would help you know, shore up the resiliency of their community. Um, and so, you know, over the course of the following 12 to 18 months, we, we deployed that million dollars and are, are pretty proud of many of the projects um, that, you know, centered on the things we've been talking about, wildfires and flood and the like. Um, and so uh, we are going to be very pleased to announce uh, at the gala tomorrow night that um, we've decided to refresh that. We will be uh, setting aside $2 million uh, over the next two years uh, for uh, the same purpose. Uh, we will be inviting you know, municipalities to apply for dollars uh, and, and projects that will help to make their communities uh, more resilient as they're going to be facing these, uh, these threats over the coming years. Why is that important to adapt, to renew this grant? Well, I think, you know, we continue to see the impact uh, that these extreme weather events have on communities. And uh, we feel that, um, you know, the, the best way to make a difference there is to, uh, you know, help communities invest in advance, not after the fact, although that's important as well and will continue to be there on the front lines when disaster strikes, um, but to try and get ahead of it and invest in things that involve, you know, prevention and as we call it sometimes adaptation to how the weather is changing around us. And so we think it's important. Um, we, were, we were proud of the project that occurred the last time we did this. And so we said, um, let's take it out of pilot mode. Let's do it again. And is it for all municipalities of all different sizes, from northern rural mm -hmm. hamlets to small villages to the Any municipality Canada? across Canada um, is uh, eligible to apply. Uh, there are uh, a few little criteria that um, uh, people will will hear about in the details, you know, once they they get the application process and all of that. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's open and and really it's about. The, the business case. It's making a case for how big of a difference, uh, you know, each of these projects can make. And so we will be looking for them to, to talk about things that we know, may, maybe things that the Intact Centre has published in the science as being relevant uh, and important when, when trying to invest in resilience. Um, but it's really going to be looking for um, the highest impact opportunities. So you talked about that gel that you would come in and potentially help out with or fire suppression, setting up sprinklers. What exactly would 
municipalities be applying for to adapt to potential changing? Is there a criteria yeah. that you're Ma looking for already? Maybe what I'll do is I'll look back to, uh, you know, some of the successes we had uh, when when we did this last. And, you know, there was a number of communities that, that took a bunch of different tactics. Um, so maybe the, the one that I'll mention is, um, you know, probably many of your listeners uh, are familiar with uh, the the standard that is Fire Smart, uh, which is the science behind you know how, how to make a property. My old municipality was one of the first communities of Fire Smart. Yeah, so uh, so we think Fire Smart is great, and um, you know some of the communities, one of those uh, being the the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo um, in uh, around Fort Mur Fort McMurray. Um, chose to use some of those dollars to really amplify the number of fire smart assessments they could do, training additional fire smart assessors, doing additional fire smart assessments, uh, and, and really mobilizing uh, you know, additional action at the level of the homeowner. Um, and, uh, and it was very successful. It really educated a lot of the community. It encouraged a lot of additional activity in terms of uh, resilience. And um, so that's, that's one example, but those are the types of things uh, that we'll be looking for in the uh, next round of applications. It seems like you're a strong partner, uh, proponent of partnership with working with municipalities. Um, how can people apply? I know the devil's always in the details and the dates of when they can start applying will be coming out here soon, but can you give us any indication of when people will actually start be able to say, okay, I have an idea, maybe I can apply for this. Yeah. More, you know, tactical details to follow, but, um, you know, we'll be uh, opening the door for applications. I think it's beginning in September uh, of this year. So just a couple of months and from now, more details to follow. Are sending out information to yes. members already? Is it just only for people who have intact insurance a little bit? Or is it open to all municipalities? Yeah, all municipalities uh, are eligible to apply. And uh, it will be, there will be information uh, on the web that people can access uh, and, and uh, to find the application form electronically. So before I let you go, Carla, I have one last question. It's, it's the, always the open-ended question. What haven't we talked about that you want to make sure municipal listeners from across Canada understand about what Intact is promoting here and why the partnership between Intact and FCM was so important? Yeah, I guess um, one of the things I really want everybody to know is that um, you know we, we see that in our data as an insurer and being on the front lines, we see uh, the devastation that these more severe, more frequent weather events are causing. And we know that a dollar invested in prevention and adaptation makes a very big difference. We've heard today, it's been, it's been quoted a number of times, um, that, that it can save us from 13 to $15 in direct and indirect costs downstream. And not to mention, you know, the human suffering <laughs> that comes with, uh, you know, not being ready for, for one of those disasters. So, um, you know, we see that. Um, we know municipalities see that. Uh, we we want to we wanna help. We want to be a, a force for good, uh, helping to make the communities where we all live and work more resilient. Uh, and so that's really, you know, why we're doing some of the things that we've talked about here today. Now, before we let you go, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for allowing us to attend this year's convention here in beautiful Calgary, Alberta. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now, wherever you're watching this or listening to this. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs from coast to coast to coast. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.